The Youth Environmental Summit, or YES, is a week-long research experience for 30 grade 11 learners selected from across the country. We bring them to a significant landscape in Namibia, most usually a national park. This year's was held at Namatoni Environmental Education Center in Itosha National Park, one of the most significant national parks in Namibia. So Namutoni is a center that educates the environment located in Etosha. Uh, to me, is an ideal place for uh, this year's program taking place. Uh, Etosha is a place where we have all this variety of living organisms that we have, especially the different types of animals. So our young ones or the youth will then have the opportunity to learn more about all these different types of living organisms we have. The goal of this uh, environmental education, which is Namutoni, is um, to promote sustainable uh, lifestyle um, in Namibian uh, people. Uh, through the education, we want to promote or to, to, to encourage our people to value our biodiversity or natural resources. So when we conduct this education, in a way, we uh, aim to achieve uh, that goal. The aims of the YES are manifold, but the three primary goals of the YES that we try to instill in these learners is to give them basic exposure to the scientific method, to instill in them an interest in pursuing scientific fieldwork and give them experience doing actual research, and practical application of classroom knowledge. The YES actually fills a very important gap which is found in Namibian curriculum in that most students don't get the opportunity to do scientific fieldwork. Um, they focus more on the theory of science, so the YES actually provides a very important opportunity for these students to explore science in its real extent. Biodiversity in the park is quite good. Uh, there's a lot of things or living organisms that people uh, really don't know, which we have. The parks has got this variety of all these different types of uh, animals that uh, they see on TV or read on, in books, which they could actually get an opportunity to see and learn uh, physically. I led a project at YES, Youth Environmental Summit. The big theme of this year's YES was mainstreaming biodiversity and sustaining people and their livelihoods. Um, and my project actually applied on the degraded lands, the lands that aren't as, as useful anymore for the people. If we reforestate those lands, then they have much more uses in the future. We have used four different methods there. First, we established a baseline. So we knew what the evaporation and transpiration rate was uh, with a normal plant in the Atosha area. We used that by saturating the soil, um, so making sure that all the holes in the soil are filled with water, and then we measured how fast it, it, it drops uh, until there is no water anymore in the soil. And then on that baseline, we applied four different methods. So the first one was shade, and then we used mulch. We used the mulch to cover the soil, um, we used a modified bucket, that is just a bucket with a hole on top of it, where you put the plant through. And the last thing we used was a windbreak, because wind also has uh, an influence on the evaporation rate and the transpiration. To measure the transpiration or of normal trees around the Tosha, we put bags around branches of the trees. We tie them up with cable ties and let them sit for 24 hours. In those 24 hours, um, transpiration would occur, so that means that the, actually the plant would sweat and the sweat would condense on the sides of the bag and then would collect in the bottom. That tree branch was only a percentage of the tree, so we multiplied the amount of water we had by the percentage of the tree to get 100%, then we knew how much one tree would transpirate in 24 hours. We also did a tree survey. We went in, out into the field to see how the biodiversity is in the dosha itself on the graded lands. We used a site there that was burned down five years ago from a massive field fire and there is grazing there as well. And that we compared then to a normal site where the land was undisturbed. And then we could see the difference in three species we had. 
we found out from the tree survey under the degraded lands which, which plants occur uh, naturally and we found out what the transpiration rate was globally in Etosha. The research project that I led at the YES this year was looking at questions of sustainable tourism. So with the students, we were actually looking to quantify what sustainability in tourism means by looking at the NWR resort at Namatoni in Atosha as a case study. Within exploring that question of what is sustainable tourism and how do you quantify it, the students ended up looking at three different sectors or impact areas of tourism. So they looked at transportation costs, food sourcing, and finally the sourcing of those tourist trinkets that are purchased at Namatoni. So to examine this question of what sustainability in tourism is at NWR, we had learners go around and explore those three different categories of transportation, food, and tourist trinkets and look at both quantitative and qualitative data collection. So for qualitative data, most of that data was collected through interviews with tourists to gain a better idea of what tourist expectations of sustainability in tourism ventures would be. We also had students interview tourists about their transportation costs, for example, and how far and what types of vehicles they were driving and why they chose those vehicles. And we had them conduct interviews because that's a very different kind of data from what is typically associated with science. The other two projects that we had this year were focusing on quantitative data, so number crunching, but many students don't see qualitative data, so words and answers to questions as data. So that was part of the reason we wanted to focus on giving the learners exposure to both qualitative and quantitative data, and that both of them are, are equivalent in, in terms of their value to science. Among some of the other activities we had the students doing, they were also actually interviewing NWR staff who work at the resort about their perception of sustainability and what the resort is doing to be sustainable, whether that's a priority for park management, for example, to appeal to sustainability interests in tourists. So the goals behind the sustainability research project at the YES were to really give learners exposure to the complicated nature of a lot of science and especially in a topic which is so important to the Namibian economy and gets a lot of attention such as sustainability and tourism. We chose sustainable tourism as one of the project topics for this year's YES because sustainable tourism is a buzzword that's thrown around a lot in a country where tourism is so important as in Namibia. And there's very little understanding as to what goes into sustainable behavior. So we wanted the students to get a chance to explore what sustainability is in tourism by actually talking to people and going to a place where tourism is arguably one of the most important industries in the country. So on the week of YES, um, I got the opportunity to be a project leader. The project was about assessing freshwater bi algae biodiversity and using this biodiversity together with physical parameters to assess the water quality of water, uh, of different water sources. So the project consisted of field work, which required going out into the field at the different water sources and collecting water samples, and also lab work, which um, consisted of microscopic work and then identifying or drawing the different types of algae. Water is a very important source to sustain livelihood, which uh, contributes to the theme of YES. It's important to know the quality of water in order to determine if it's safe for human consumption. There's also, if there is some contaminants in the water, it would be good to know it because it could have an influence on the animals in the area. And the thing about freshwater algae biodiversity is if there's a higher abundance of algae in the ecosystem, the number of invertebrates in the water, the number of fish, the number of birds, everything may increase because algae forms the base of a food chain in an ecosystem. So we used uh, three different water sources, a freshwater spring, borehole and then tap water. Uh, we used different sites in order to compare them. Algae has a certain environmental preference, so the water source and the 
type of area and everything would have an influence on the type of algae you find in a water source. So we used the different water sources to compare them and see if there is a difference. And also there is, um, tap water is used for human consumption when the borehole and spring water is used by animals as a drinking ground. So we got just to test if it's safe for the animals as well. What I enjoyed most about YES was when Karim get, did the evening reflection. Um, we had microscopic work that day and it was the first time he used a microscope. And it was actually amazed by the life underneath a microscope that you can't see with your eyes. And at the evening reflection he said, the eyes are useless if the mind is blind. And that actually gave me hope for the future. So at the end of the week-long research experience that these students have at the YES, they produce a role play and a song as a public feedback on the research that they conducted, delivering their results and interpreting them for the public in a way that is accessible to many people. And this role play is presented usually at the end of the week in a presentation to celebrate International Biological Diversity Day. Part of what the students do is also produce a song to include the audience in their research findings and their experience of the Youth Environmental Summit. It has been a great week, like being here at, at, at Toshio. It's even my first time to come here. And the best thing I like the most is going to for a game drive and got to see many different animals here. Yeah. Hi, I'm Charlene. Hi, I'm Lorna Lee. I'm pretty ecstatic to be here at YES. I've had a wonderful time with new people. So for an introvert like me, it was a great experience. I learned so many new things. For me, it was just an extraordinary, I mean extraordinary experience. Since I came here, the YES people have uh, inspired me have diverted me, it's like now I've, uh, I, I've decided to become something else. I would like to become an environmental educator. I really enjoyed working with the YES because I worked with real scientists and did experiments with them. It really gives hope and courage for the future. And I would like to thank the YES and my school for giving me this opportunity. What I've learned from this is I've learned a lot how to carry out researches and it's more benefit. I've learned to say yes to the yes. Thank you guys. Hi,